yo what's good guys we are back at it again with another mlb video for you guys and today i'm going to be showing you guys the most competitive team you can be running uh if you are getting to those higher levels of ranked like hall of fame and legend and you're struggling uh with the smaller pcis and the faster pitches hopefully this team can kind of help you to bridge that gap and become a little more competitive on those higher difficulties so without further ado if this does help you guys if you do enjoy the content i would urge you to like and subscribe we're going to be here all year posting tip videos for you guys uh, and some gameplay. I know I have had a lot of gameplay that is coming very soon. Um, so the reason I'm doing this is because I just hit Hall of Fame. So um, Nolan Arenado is the team captain. I kind of hinted towards this when I was going over the Bucks and boost for you guys that this would probably be the better boost towards the end. Uh, if you are somebody that plays more Hall of Fame and legend based difficulty, this team will probably be better. Uh, and I was right. It's it's basically being ran on uh, every top end player's team right now. If you play consistently on Legend, you are running basically some version of this team. Uh, if you watch the top end players doing wagers, doing tourneys, stuff like that, this is more more or less the team that they've all run uh, at some point. You know, little variations here or there, uh, but for the most part, you're looking something like this. So, starting it off. Um, you can see I'm actually on the tier two. I think the tier two can be competitive. I think the tier three is very competitive. It just kind of depends on what you need and what players are available to you. Cause I know not everybody has, uh, the resources to have Babe Ruth in left field, obviously. Um, so I'm going to show you guys some other alternative JD Davis. This is who I would be playing here. Uh, if I wanted the tier three boost, I would be playing him here or I'd be playing him at first base. He has to be on the field. His swing is way too crazy, um, way too good uh, to not have him on the field. Center field, there's really no options, right? Because the stipulation for the Arenado team is that you have 45 speed or less. Uh, I think it's actually 44 or less. Uh, I think 45 doesn't quite count. Um, so basically there's no great options for center field. Uh, for me personally, I'm running Trout. You can see that his wheel looks very, very good without getting any of the boost. Um, so I think he's probably my favorite option. I think a guy like McCutcheon would also be very competitive. Bernie's probably a little bit slow to be running in center field. Uh, Dylan Cruz is still usable if you do enjoy that card. Uh, so I think those are great options. In right field, you have pretty limited options. This is usually where every top end player is kind of using their flex spot. Um, they are playing either like Ruth or Acuna here uh, are probably the two most common. You'll see people that actually make the team. Kyle Tucker makes the team. He looks very good, especially when he has inside edge playing up like this. Uh, I think he's going to get 20 contact right. So you're looking at 97 before the inside edge. Uh, he's going to get some power against lefties. So that's nice. And he's going to get more clutch. So he is viable, um, very, very slow, and will probably cost you some runs. If you're looking also down that route, then you could go like McCovey or somebody. Uh, and I will briefly go over some people that do make the team that I do not currently own. So at first base, uh, Matt Olson is probably the de facto best option at this current moment for this team. Um, but if he wasn't supercharged, then guys like Palmero would have a very good argument. Uh, a guy like Abreu has a good argument. You see him on pretty much every top end player's team. Uh, and a guy like Justin Turner also has an argument. So um, at second base, for me personally, I would not go Turner, or at least right now I wouldn't. I would either go Carpenter uh, because I'm a psycho and I pick this card just because I really like his swing every year. And he is very good, and I'm sure he would be extremely good on this team. Um, another variation would be you move like Seager to second and then play this Crawford card. A lot of people are using this Crawford card because he has maxed out clutch. But you can see that the hitting stats are pretty lackluster, and he's probably going to be your eight hitter right in front of the captain himself, Arenado. Uh, this card sucks. Like every top end player bats really good with him just because they're extremely good at the game. But there's a reason that he bats ninth for all of them. And it's because he's unbelievably slow and he's going to clog up the bases a lot. And when you look at his hitting stats, he is very deficient in a couple areas. Uh, his clutch is decent. It's not great. It's not terrible. Um, his contact against lefties is abysmal, and his power against righties is not very good either. Um, so overall, if you could not run this card, you probably would. Uh, but the way captains work this year, you have to keep them in for six innings. So if that seventh inning stretch, you want to pull them, then that's up to you. Uh, but with his defense and the fact he'll probably only get one at bat anyway after that point, really no point. Might as well keep him in. 
Uh, so DH, Jordan's the obvious choice. I think everybody rakes with this Jordan card. I actually believe he's probably the best hitter in the game, even before Bay Ruth right now. For some reason, he gets so many just insane swings to go. Uh, he has some of my craziest stats online, and this is with him slumping. He has been slumping. He was batting over 620 for me at one point. This card's crazy. He's unreal. I think he's by far the best DH. And then catcher surprisingly has the most options on this team kind of makes sense because a lot of catchers are slow uh but you got piazza look at this piazza this is the best piazza we've ever had in dd i think his swing is better this year he has max out clutch max out contact right very very high contact against lefties basically he is always going to step up to the plate with the biggest pci possible which is huge when you're on a difficulty like legend uh, and then he kind of gets patched up against lefties also with this boost. You can see if you look at the base card, he's deficient against lefties. His clutch is decent. It's not like immaculate. Uh, and the fielding's kind of questionable also. When you add the boost to him, he's a gold fielding catcher if you super fracture him. And he has power against lefties to match his power against righty. Uh, so I think he's absolutely insane with the boost. Gary is usable, but the fact that he gets no contact left and he's not getting that much more clutch, I would say makes him unusable. Yaz, again, if you're on Hall of Fame, I think he's usable. And the fact that he's a switch hitter is going to help him age. Uh, it's going to help this card a lot because he's already kind of got okay clutch. This is going to give him good enough clutch where you can keep using the Salvi card. Um, and then this card is crazy. If you really enjoy this Posada card, this is the team boost for you. Because I think, honestly, Jorge might have one of the best swings in the game. And you can run him on the Buxton boost. And then when you get up to Hall of Fame, you can easily just swap to the Arenado boost. Uh, and it'll be a seamless transition. This will be a guy that's on your team for a long time. So, uh, other than that, if I was going to run my most competitive version of this lineup out there, uh, I think you would see it. I think I would go... Especially on Hall of Fame, I would go with the Tier 2 boost. If I wasn't on Hall of Fame, um, if I was on Legend, I would probably be looking to throw some more guys to actually make the team out there. And it would probably be something like this, if that is the full boost. I think that is the full boost. Yeah, so if you want the full boost, I would probably run this and then swap um, Carpenter for Turner at some point. Uh, if Olsen's not supercharged anymore, then I'd probably go Abreu, uh, but Palmero is also extremely, extremely good and well-rounded with this boost. Uh, if you want me to go over the rotation, this would pretty much, I would think, be the best rotation in the game right now, uh, except you would probably swap Mizrowski for Randy. I don't quite have him yet. I'm very close. Um, you will guys will see the inside the mind that I post very soon. Um, after that, I needed, like, three extra base hits to get uh 10 points to get to a randy um and the guy quit after i got two so unfortunate uh but we will have randy soon so i think we'll have the best starting rotation in the game and i think the bullpen's kind of already there uh the only guy i'm really missing i would say is evan phillips i would like to get that 90 overall evan phillips card uh but even then i don't think he's at his true potential until you're on legend when you're on legend that card's very gross uh every other difficulty not the greatest so this is the bullpen I'm running. I uh, absolutely have kicked Billy Wagner to the side. This Class A is not bad if you're playing a legend. Uh, Felix is not bad, but any good player is going to really read him super well. Uh, Melanson's honestly not bad. Munoz, honestly not bad. Uh, and then a guy like Camillo Del Ball is really not bad. Uh, you see him out of pretty much every top end player's bullpen. Don't get it twisted. If you're on All-Star, if you're on Hall of Fame, this card is BP. When you get to Legend, he is a different animal, especially with the Live Series boost that he's getting right now. So that is kind of the most competitive lineup in the game. If you don't want to see all the other cards that make it, there's not that many. Uh, but I think there's a few to mention. Then I, uh, I enjoyed your time watching the video. But uh, right now, I'm just going to go over a couple cards that I don't own that do make the team. So I think the highest overall that I don't own that does make the team. I will probably take him whenever I finish BR. I think I'm at like 95 points. Um, so Joe Maurer makes the team barely. Uh, you can see he makes about one. You can see that's going to give him almost max clutch, almost, or it will give him max contact against right. And it's going to patch up his power against lefties, which was really the most questionable thing on this card. Uh, I think this McCutcheon's a great example of this. If you can get to like 70, 70 power, a lot of your perfects are going to go. 
Um, and honestly, I've seen a good amount of no PCI home runs from this McCutcheon card. Um, so I think Maurer is super playable, and I think he's kind of 1A, 1B with Piazza um, for catchers to run with that team. Other than that, um, I think there's one other really good card that makes this. A lot of cards just barely, barely miss it. Um, but I think the card, Reese Hoskins is good. He's sneaky good. Uh, you can see for 12K, you're probably not going to be able to get anybody that's better on the team. Ah, Adovino, I did forget about that. Adovino should probably be in your bullpen, uh, naturally. And then I think the last crazy good card that makes this team, Fielder's okay with the team boost, nothing to write home about, is Adam Dunn. Uh, similar to Posada, he is available on both the Buxton and the Arenado team. So this is another card where if you've already taken him, or if you haven't earned your captain pack yet, he can kind of age with your team uh, and play along with you for a long time. A Eugenio can also do it, um, but you can see his clutch is already pretty bad. His contacts are pretty bad already. Uh, would get crazy power, um, but not really where you want to be when you're on Hall of Fame and Legend. Uh, whereas Dunn, you can see it will be crazy. He will have great clutch, great contact, and his power against lefties will be just as high as his power against righties. Um, so this card is very good. He's basically a free Jordan Alvarez. Uh, if you haven't already, you know, kind of earned those uh, captain packs or for some reason you've kind of hung on to them, um, then now would be a good time to go for Adam Dunn because I think he's going to be meta for a while. Um, the fact that he makes both of these, I think that's about it. Uh, I got pretty in the trenches earlier looking for just any and everybody that made the team. There are some okay players, but nothing to write home about. You will see for yourself if you start to run this boost, if any of your players make it. Uh, Troy Glaus barely misses. That would have been a crazy budget card. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is it. If this did help you, I would urge you to like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, so if you're on Hall of Fame or higher, I think it's worth running this. If you're on All-Star, keep the bucks and boost. Uh, you are not going to notice the contact on All-Star. 50 contact is more than usable on All-Star as long as your power is good. Till next time, guys. Peace.